glass morphism, new color palettes, fonts and other design hype is not what we will be talking about today. In this video, we'll talk about the real topics that impact the future of UX. My name is Maureen. I have been working as a product designer for the past four years. And in this video, I'll share the five key areas that I believe will have a big impact on our industry in the coming years. Before we start with the video, let me explain to you why I think it's important to focus on these five areas. One of the things that excite me the most about working in UX is that our industry is constantly changing and evolving. And apart from that, working as a UX designer also means that you're very close to emerging technologies. Technologies that will change the way that people perceive and experience the world. And this also change the way that we have to design solutions for these people. I want to introduce you to five topics that I think will have a big impact on our industry as well as the world in the next five to 10 years. So let's dive right in. One area that I see really developing in the coming years is extended reality. And with that, of course, I mean augmented reality and virtual reality. The impact of design right now already goes beyond the screen. Just think about, for example, the like button. That is just a feature in a product, but it already has a really big impact on our social lives. Or what do you think of Snapchat or Instagram filters that change someone's appearance so subtly that you almost don't see it? These are just small examples of how our reality is changing. But with new technologies like AR and VR, the impact will be even bigger. What I mean with extended reality are technologies like augmented reality or virtual reality. Augmented reality is a technology that adds digital components to our real world reality. Whereas virtual reality completely immerses you in a different reality. So it's a completely different world that you'll find yourself in. With extended reality, I also mean technologies like holography, spatial and augmented audio, as well as the internet of things. So for example, holograms, smart fridges or smart lightning. And with spatial and augmented audio, we mean immersive soundscapes. If these new technologies excite you, but also worry you or even scare you, then that is completely understandable. And that is one more reason to make sure that we stay up to date with these new technologies. First of all, extended reality will hugely impact the way that we design because we won't only be designing for 2D screens like our desktop or laptop or mobile phone, like we're doing now, but we will also be designing 3D spaces where gesture, audio, and headsets play a role. On top of that, devices and thus experiences will be more linked with each other. The benefits of extended reality are easy to spot. You have a way more immersed experience when you're gaming. It's easier to meet your friends that live around the globe. Extended reality can also help professions like doctors and teachers perform their job better, especially in a remote environment. However, it's not just exciting to live in a sci-fi world. It also comes with some important questions that we have to ask ourselves. How will extended reality impact our environment? How will AR and VR impact our mental health? Will these technologies be accessible and inclusive? And what does it mean when big companies like Facebook work on these new technologies? What are their incentives? On to area number two, which is kind of linked to extended reality. And I'm talking about AI or artificial intelligence. AI or artificial intelligence is an umbrella term for all kinds of computer generated intelligence. Today, we have what we call weak AI, even though this AI is far from weak. This kind of weak AI focuses on performing a specific task, for example, driverless cars or smartphone voice assistants. For example, Siri on an iPhone. In the future, we can expect AI to go up a level and reach what we call artificial general intelligence. Real examples of this 
don't really exist yet, but this kind of AI would equal human intelligence and would be able to have a self-aware consciousness that can solve problems, learn and plan for the future. Lastly, artificial super intelligence would surpass the intelligence and ability of the human brain. But this doesn't exist yet. Examples of weak or narrow AI can already be found in our industry today as well. In our industry, we already use AI tools today, for example, to remove backgrounds from images or to enhance images, to generate color palettes that are based on our personal tastes, or to create portraits from fictional people for our personas. A field where AI can be of big help for us is user research and information architecture. For example, we can use AI to generate wireframes based on best practices from the web. Or we can use AI for user testing. So instead of having real people testing our designs, we can have an AI checking for any kind of usability problems. Tools that use AI for user testing already exist today. For example, a tool that uses heat maps or generates heat maps based on the designs that you feed it. For example, Zyro that generates heat maps based on the wireframes that you upload. This tool is a really good cost-saving way to get some of your ideas already tested before you test them with real users. One important thing to keep in mind is that computer intelligence or AI isn't neutral. It always has the biases of the people that develop this AI. AI is biased too and can definitely also discriminate. For example, there were multiple incidents of an AI that only recognized light-skinned people because it was only trained to recognize light-skinned people. As we'll be helping to support building AI and train AI, we have to be aware of our own biases. How can we make sure that we create an AI that is not discriminating other groups of people? Up next, I'll discuss Web 3.0 and the Metaverse. Now that we talked about extended reality and artificial intelligence, we of course also need to talk about the Metaverse. And this is something that you might have already heard because it was a big news item in 2021. Let's talk a little bit about the internet and where the internet is heading. When you think about how far the internet has come and developed in the past 30 to 40 years, it's quite staggering. When you think back to 1990, no one was online shopping and now the majority of internet users has some kind of experience with it. The foundation of the internet was created by public institutions like governments and universities. And the reason was that they had the resources to set up a structure like that. The internet was built as a way to share information and to make books and other information available for the public electronically. Back in the day, only very few people created content that was consumed by the majority of internet users. Nowadays, of course, that's completely different. A lot of people generate content. So the internet has changed from a place where most people were passive users that would just read information or bulletin boards. And now we're at a place where everyone can create content. And a lot of people are not only passive readers, but also active content creators. So in a sense, the internet has become way more interactive. The internet as we know it now is at a tipping point. It is a communication tool, but it is no longer built by only public institutions like governments and universities. But still, the internet doesn't belong completely to the users because content creators are still dependent on big companies like YouTube or Facebook. But that will change with the coming of Web 3.0 as the internet will become a more decentralized place. So what do I mean with Web 3.0? That's pretty hard to say because there are many definitions and we're not completely in that new era of internet. An example of decentralization is the blockchain, which already exists today. So we are already experiencing the starts of Web 3.0. Now, what does this mean for UX designers? The important thing that we have to keep in mind 
is this decentralization part. Data will not be in the hands of big companies or public institutions anymore, but will be managed by us on the blockchain. And this could lead to a more secure and transparent environment. So how does all of this link back to artificial intelligence? Web 3.0 is the next stage of the internet that would make the internet even more intelligent or process information with near human-like intelligence through the power of AI systems. AI systems could run smart programs to assist users. So now let's talk about something that brings all of this together that we discussed before, and that is the metaverse. The metaverse is an example that brings together virtual reality and a decentralized internet. Just like Web 3.0, there also isn't a universal definition of what the metaverse is. Some people describe the metaverse as a collection of 3D worlds, whereas others describe the metaverse as a collection of interconnected worlds that also link back to the real world as we know it today. Let's go with the definition of Facebook, or as they now are known, Meta. Meta describes the metaverse, a set of virtual spaces where you can meet and explore with other people that aren't in the same physical space as you are. And what is also important to mention here is that Facebook isn't the only company that is working on building a metaverse. You also have other companies like Epic or Roblox that are building their own metaverses in their own way. So as you can see, there are a lot of exciting things happening in the tech world but also in our own UX industry, there are some really interesting developments happening that I believe will have a profound impact on our profession in the coming years. Let's talk about a topic that is very close to my heart and that is UX maturity in companies. So what do I mean with UX maturity? UX maturity measures the capability and desirability of companies to deliver user-centered design. From my own experience, as well as what I hear from other people in the industry, is that the UX maturity is still pretty low in a lot of companies. And what I mean with that is that a lot of companies are still pretty unfamiliar with design practices or with UX design. That also means that a lot of people might not understand what UX design is or why it is valuable. So how does that link back to our job? Right now, the role of a UX designer is still one where we also have to teach people about our profession and why UX design is worth investing in. So a big part of our role is also evangelizing and teaching other people's our processes and methods. Now, the good news is that UX design will play an increasing role in companies in the coming years. And so I believe that the maturity will develop into a more maintaining role where we have to make sure that the understanding of UX is not only there, but is also kept and maybe even develop stronger. So how can you help to improve the UX maturity in your company? First of all, I recommend you learn how to use quantitative data alongside qualitative data to help you prove your designs and design decisions. Second, try to understand business objectives and try to understand how UX and business go hand in hand and can support each other. And lastly, actively collaborate and co-create with non-designers in your team and make them part of your process. These are some tips that will help you grow the UX maturity in your company and thus also create an understanding of user experience and how to build a stronger user experience. We talked about UX maturity, but there are also other things that are changing in our personal lives. And I'm talking about a new way of working. In 2020, remote working and working from home became a thing. And now it is pretty much accepted or normal that you work from a different place than your office. We adjusted to having meetings over Zoom, and we also set up our whole workstation on the kitchen table. 
As time passed by, we all got some kind of Zoom fatigue and probably a little bit of back pain from still working at that kitchen table. So how will this change in the coming years? Will we all go back to the office or will we turn our homes into professional offices? The problem is that when we started working from home in 2020, we didn't adapt to a new way of working. We were just doing the same work routines at a different place. For example, we were still following linear work schedules that may not be that suitable for working from home. Is it really realistic to expect people to be really productive for eight hours a day while they have kids, pets and household to take care of. In 2021, we still saw quite a lot of companies that were keen on getting their employees going back to the office as soon as they could. What also makes working remotely increasingly easier is no-code tools. In the industry, we already use quite a lot of no-code tools, for example, Figma, Webflow or Notion. With no code, I mean, and the name already says it, tools that don't require coding skills. And this also influences the skill set of the future UX designer. Maybe at some point, soft skills become more important than hard skills because we will have the tools that make the work easier for us. Will the coming years lead us into true remote working with flexible working hours, full remote policies, better balance between focus time and meeting time? That might well be because designers set the trend and that is something that you already see now, but that I believe will become even stronger in the coming years. And what I mean with that is that designers are high in demand. So we also have the chance to make some demands when we are looking for a new job role. That means we no longer have to put up with inflexible work schedules or work that doesn't fit our lifestyle. For example, if you have a family or you have long commuting times. Now with designers being high in demand, another thing becomes increasingly important and that is having a personal brand. A personal brand is your online persona. Who are you, but even more importantly, what do you stand for? What are your beliefs and values? And what is it that you want to be known for? What's your expertise? Developing a personal brand also helps you with networking and building a reputation in the industry. So we've discussed quite a lot. We've discussed extended reality, the future of the internet, the future of our industry, and also the future of working. Now, how does all of this link back to your role as a UX designer? As a UX designer, you're a change maker. As I already told you before, the maturity of UX is quite low in a lot of companies. So you will need to bring a lot of empathy into companies. And empathy comes from understanding the world around you. And that is why it is so important to keep up to date with what is going on in our industry and also in the tech world in general. We work in a digital field that evolves very fast. Now, you don't have to become a metaverse expert or an AI programmer, but it is important that you understand the complications and implications of these new technologies. So how do you stay up to date? I hope that this video already gave you a bit of an introduction, but of course, now it's up to you. And I recommend that you connect with peers, that you follow news outlets like Wired or The Verge, or maybe even start watching the evening news with your parents. You might learn an interesting thing or two. Now, of course, the things I talked about are the things that I believe will have a big impact on our industry in the coming years. But now I really want to know, where do you think the future of UX is heading? Is there anything that I overlooked and that you would like to add? Or is there anything that you don't agree with at all? So let's start a discussion and leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you wanna have a summary of all the things that I talked about in this video, then check out the Career Foundry blog. We have written an article with all these exciting developments that are coming up. You can find the link in the description. I really hope you liked this video and if you want to see more videos with me talking about UX, you can hit this button here to subscribe to this channel. 
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.